Hey, it's Ellie from Magic Beans. I'm here at South Shore BMW about to show you a totally cool video about installing infant car seats and convertible car seats in various BMWs. I'm so excited about this video, but um, there may be lots of questions that you may have, um, different facts that go along with this video. Don't worry, we did a blog post over on our website that answers all of those questions. So um, after you watch the video, click over to mbeans.com and we'll answer all of those questions. And remember, ask your questions to questions at mbeans.com. Enjoy the video. We've been getting so many questions, so questions at mbeans.com and through your, uh, your viewer comments about um, how car seats install in BMW specifically. And I was very curious as to how that would work. So I brought some of our most popular and most asked about car seats today to the BMW dealership here um, to show you how these car seats install. Now this isn't an official installation video. We definitely recommend that you take your car seats to a, a certified uh, CPS tech, um, child passenger safety tech, um, to make sure they're installed correctly. But I am going to show you some guidelines um, between uh, for how to install the Nuna Pippa, the Cybex Cloud Q, the Nuna Rava convertible car seat, and the Klec Foom uh, convertible car seat. Um, like I said, I'm here um, in Rockland, Massachusetts. I'm actually just a mile away from Upper Baby. But you should know that Magic Beans has a store just down the block here in Norwell at 45 Pond Street in Norwell. So if you want to check out these car seats for yourself, if you're taking a test drive here at a South Shore BMW and want to drive over to the Norwell store and check the car seats in your car, you can do that. And you can do that at any Magic Beans location. So we have two cars. Thank you, South Shore BMW. I'm going to show you a BMW X5. How it goes into their um, SUV, their larger SUV. And I also have here a, um, a 5 Series, a BMW 528. And you'll see that the latch um, openings um, are a little bit different. Um, so let me show you that first. Here we have a BMW X5 and let's come look in the back seat with me. So as you'll see, you look at the bite of the seat of the back seat and this is true for any car pretty much after 2002 has latch so if you put your hand in the bite of the seat you'll see there's a little button and on the button there's the word isofix that's like a word for latch like a european word for latch in there there's a lower anchor inside the bite of the seat and that's where we're going to be installing the car seats but um, it's a little bit hidden but if you look in the 5 series it's a little bit different you have these little openings you can just pop that open and there you can see the exposed lower anchor for where you're going to be installing the car seat. If you have a BMW um, X1, so their SUVs, you have an X1, an X3, and an X5. The X1 is their smallest of the SUVs and it's their newest platform. So they're gonna have um, an installation system very similar to the 5 Series like I just showed you. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to install a Nuna Pippa um, into, this is an X5. So. First thing is you remove the Pippa from the base by lifting this on the back. Remove the car seat. Now remember, all infant car seats come with a base included. So you can buy, with, buy an extra as an accessory if you have more than one car, but you're gonna get this base included. And the reason why you might get a Pippa is that it has this load leg. Pops right open like that. And that's an extra um, point of contact. So. Um, if you're in a crash, it's going to sort of stop some of the forces from moving in this direction. Um, and next, with the Pippa, which is pretty unique to the Pippa um, for American car seats, is it has a rigid latch. It's called Isofix, and that's why it says Isofix on that little button on the side. And like I said, you can't see the um, lower anchors, but I can feel them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide that in. One. We're in and it's a perfect line right at the angle adjuster, just what we want. And now you're able to take your Pippa, okay. Other good piece of information, I have to move the um, driver's seat up a little bit in order to uh, make it fit um, properly. Okay, let's see how I fit in the car with the, with the Pippa behind the driver's seat. So I'm 5'11", and I had to move the um, car seat up an inch, but this feels, feels very comfortable to me. I'm not crushed or cramped at all, so this would be a really good fit. Okay, so now I'm in a BMW 528. This is a, a sedan where the last car was an SUV. Um, the nice thing about this is that you have um, these 
very much exposed latches, so it's very, very easy to install um, the 528. Uh, the interesting thing is this is an older sort of model. I mean, this is the uh, 2017 car, but they haven't updated this car in a number of years, but they are going to be doing an update of this car um, next fall in 2000, uh, 2017 for the 2018 model. Um, so basically, all I'm going to do is line up those, um, those rigid latches, the isofix, and boom. Click in, lower this down, and there we go, perfect right in the middle of the bubble. So you have your, and now we're obviously installed this on the passenger side. Let me just grab the car seat. And that goes right in, um, still perfectly level, um, and um, still lots of room for the for the passenger behind the, uh, by the, behind the infant car seat. That's pretty cool. A frequent question we get is, um, you've heard that it's safest to install the car seat base in the center. Um, and that is sort of true. Um, the, the real answer is your car seat's installed where it's installed properly. Um, as you may know, 80, over 85% of car seats are installed incorrectly. So if you're not gonna get a good fit, in the center, use your isofix on the side. And these latch systems make it much, much easier for these uh, car seat bases to install. Now it is very possible to install these, um, these car seat bases in the center of the back seat. I'll show you. So many times, like with this car, there's a hump right here in the middle, which is not gonna enable you to use your load leg. So you saw, I just put the load leg back in, and now I'm gonna take my car seat base and I'm gonna install it um, with the seat belt. Now you'll see that there's also a bit of a hump here so this may not get a great installation but something very important to note that there is no latch on in the middle of the back seat and there are actually very few cars that have latch in the middle so if you are doing a, a seat belt install um, on in the middle you really need to use your seat belt. Um, if you have any questions about this please email us your questions to questions at mbeads.com. Leave your comments below. Let this be a conversation. We want to talk to you about uh, car seat safety and car seat installation. But next, let's show you um, a um, Cybex Cloud Q. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to put a Cybex Cloud Q in this BMW X5. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is remove the car seat from the base, like I did with the Pippa. Put this aside. Now take a look at this base. Um, this base is very, very similar to the Aton Q and also the Aton 2. Um, it's not exactly the same base, but the general principle behind this base is the same. Okay, let's show you. First of all, load leg on this guy as well. Load leg goes right down to the floor of the car. And now, um, now, when you're looking at a Cloud Q, obviously you're looking at the fact that it's super cool and that it reclines. But you have to remember that one of the reasons why you buy a Cybex car seat is because of the installation system in the base. So I have this little orange sort of knob here, and I turn the knob, and this opens up. Woo. And now what I'm going to do is lower the base by this orange thing. Watch. See this? See how that comes down? And now there are the latches. As you saw on that Pippa before, um, it was a rigid latch, but this is a much more standard latch. It's on this sort of, um, on this bit of, of strapping or webbing. So, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that, those, those anchors and I'm gonna click it in. And on this side as well, I'm just gonna loosen this up a little bit. Boom, click that in as well. Now, you just wanna take out a little bit of slack but the reason why you get this and why you get any of the premium car seats is because all you have to do is push this down less than one inch of movement at the base. Now you need to be able to, like I'm pulling this really hard back and forth and it's not really moving. You want less than one inch of movement at the base and just by um, getting that latch in properly um, by using the system, it installs. But the cool thing is, let's go to the middle of the back seat. They don't put latch in the majority of the uh, middles of the back seat. Now I'm in the middle. Now, interesting, as you saw before with the sedan, um, there was a hump. There is no hump on this X5. So I'm able to take that load leg and put it all the way down to the bottom of the car. And now I have it here in the middle as well. Now, I'm gonna take my seatbelt, put it through this blue guide, 
and I'm going to find that middle seat belt and I'm going to click it in. Clicks right in, right in the middle. Okay, this is all lined up. Push this down. This is closed. And now it is uh, less than one inch of movement at the base. Um, but just remember, this is not a lock off. This is just a ten tensioning plate. What does that mean? That means that what you need to do is one more step. Um, this is called a switchable retractor, which means that um, it acts as a normal seatbelt um, when you're just using it normally. But if you take the seatbelt and you pull it all the way out to the very end, very end, listen. I don't know if you hear that, but there's a ratcheting sound. Now it doesn't move. It's like a locked retractor. Now, now it's installed properly. This is not an installation video. This is just guidance for how this is done. Um, so please, um, please get your car seat checked by a child passenger safety technician um, to make sure that it's done properly. But I just want to show you as a guide how this works in the min middle of the back seat. You got that? Not an installation video. Let's, um, let's move to a convertible car seat. I have next to me a Klek Fünf in the Capri color. Is it a nice? Anyway, so a couple of things about this is that um, I now have it with um, the anti-rebound bar and it has this wedge. Now a Klek Fünf comes with a wedge that looks kind of like this or actually looks exactly like this and pull this thing up and remove the wedge. So it comes separate, but you just throw this thing on the bottom and you have the wedge on. So you need that wedge for rear facing um, position. Also on the Foomf, um, unlike the Flow, um, we have a Foomf versus Flow video. If you want to click over here, you can see that video, um, but you'll watch that later. Um, but the difference is that not only does it have that wedge, but it also has a recline. So you can actually recline, like move the seat in a recline position. And I can show that to you in a second. So I have this car seat in that same position that I had the Pippa, if you watched previously in the video, but it is like hitting up against the driver's side. Let's see what I need to do to get this to actually fit properly. Okay, now I've moved, I haven't moved the seat forward, I just moved to the arch of the top seat so that it will fit nicely. So now my anti-rebound bar is up against the back seat and this Foomf looks pretty good. Let's see how this installs. Okay, I'm gonna remove the actual top of the seat and I'm gonna expose their latch connectors. Perfect. While I have this open, you can see here, these are the lock offs for seatbelt installation for the Foof. So if you are using a seatbelt, you would use these lock-offs. Um, they updated these for 2016. So they're new and improved lock-offs. Now, I have these through, and I'm going to find those lower anchors. Click on this side. You do not want that twisted. Perfect, so that's it on that side with no twists, great, on both sides, no twists. I remember when I, before Magic Beans, when we had our first kids, I used to uh, sometimes install the, the car seats and my wife would find that I put twists in the, in the webbing. You don't want that, you want the, the seatbelt webbing to be perfectly straight through and through, so don't let them twist around, okay? Um, now that the latch is, now the latch connectors are connected, I'm gonna tighten it, pull in one side, the second side, so that there's less than an inch of movement. So this is not in perfectly. You really wanna get your weight on it and make sure that there's less than one inch of movement at the base. Really important that it's installed properly, but that is basically what this looks like. Let's talk about this anti-rebound bar for a second. So anti-rebound bar, um, if you are, God forbid, in a crash, what's gonna happen is the car's gonna generally smash forward. Um, and then what's gonna happen is there's gonna be like a recoil, like it's gonna boom and recoil back. 
By having an anti-rebound bar, it's not gonna allow the car seat when it's in that recoiling to move forward to the back of the seat. So by having this anti-rebound bar, it stops it. Okay, now if you wanna install this forward facing, let me show you. Okay, you're gonna remove the rebound bar. I'm not gonna do that in this video. Um, but what you're gonna do now, this has, just like the Pippa, it has isofix, it has a rigid latch to install it um, forward facing. So what you're gonna do is, okay, right on the front, you can you pull out here, and when I pull out here, it releases those rigid latches. I just line it up with those latch, the latches, I'm rich and I just, just can, Click it in and click it in. Okay, it's in there. Pretty, pretty great. We want our children rear facing as long as possible. Um, the rear facing weight limit of a Flume is 50 pounds, um, but when you do move turn around to forward facing, um, you can use that rigid latch. That's the guidelines for installing it forward facing. Now let me, now let me show you a new Narava. All right, now we have the new Narava. I'll show you rear facing. So I'm gonna turn this thing around. And there are these buttons, which are on both sides, where you push here to recline. I'm just gonna push it on this side. And now you can see, look how far away this is from the, from the driver's seat. So as you saw with the Pippa and with the Foom, there was, it was really right up against here. Um, but for the Rava, it really is nice and deep into the car. So you can actually have quite a tall person um, move their car seat, their seat back. Let me just move the seat back. We'll see how this goes. Seat back. I'm moving the seat all the way back. Okay, that's enough. But basically, very far back and it doesn't even touch. That is pretty cool. Now, I'm in the rear facing position and now there are There's a little hatch here, which I just push and I open up. Open up the, those cup holders on the sides to get your seatbelt to come through. Do it on both sides. Now I'm gonna take my seatbelt. Pass it through. And I'm going to seatbelt it. And now if you notice, I'm using a seatbelt and not um, a latch because they do have latch, just so you know. There's some confusion whether the Rava has latch. I mean, it is designed to be used with a, um, to be installed properly with a seatbelt, but it does have the nice latches, just so you know, if you do want to use it with latch. But like I said, you can use this with a seatbelt. And now when I take this sort of tensioning plate and I push it down, and it clicks right in and dude, it doesn't move. Okay, so now that it's installed, what we do recommend, just like with um, the cloud queue that I showed you before again, take that seatbelt, pull it to the very end, change that ratcheting around, that seatbelt retractor around. You can hear the ratcheting sound. Now it is, now it's in there properly. Thank you South Shore BMW for letting us come down here, letting me tinker around with these car seats in the actual cars. I don't always get to do that, which is pretty nice. Um, like I said, if you're in the South Shore in Massachusetts, right here, exit 14 off of Route 3, come check us out in the Norwell store. We'll take these car seats out to your car and do this in your car, no matter what kind of car you have. Again, not an installation video. This is just a help way to guide our viewers to understand how these things generally fit in the car, general guidelines for what you might think about when installing. If you have any questions about any of these car seats, any other car seats, um, email me your questions to questions at mbeans.com. Leave your comments in the comment below. If you like this video, please give us a like. We love likes, it makes a huge difference for our YouTube community. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, where we'll have more live on location videos like these, uh, car seat comparisons, stroller comparisons, and we're from Magic Beans and we just wanna help you. Thank you so much for watching.